Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I've made a few cyber videos uh, recently where I talked about, you know, cyber attacks, and I talked about malware, and I talked about computer hacking and rapid succession in the last week or two. And the reality of it is, obviously, as you all know, there are great tensions in the world right now. I'm a gamer. I'm a guy that covers internet stuff. I don't have the intelligence to talk about that, nor do I want to get into it because it's not really my expertise. And quite honestly, you have other channels for that. But what I do like to talk about, what is a pillar of my channel beyond the creepy pasta that used to happen and, you know, the deep web that I occasionally like to do. And there are videos out there coming soon for that as well. I just t tend to space it out. I do like to talk about malware and computer viruses because I feel like computer security is something that, uh, you know, you don't just set it and forget it. Obviously, with the amount of scams and the viruses that float around even in our side of the Internet, uh, I like to talk about these situations because if I can stop somebody watching my channel from getting scammed, from getting hit with all of their data being stolen, from facing identity theft, that's a win in my book, okay? Frankly, this is not just a public service, but I like to educate you with this tool, okay? I like to educate you using this platform, and that's basically what these videos are about, education, with a little bit of memory going on, okay, to make sure it's not stale the entire way through. Now, to get this started, okay, obviously I made a video where I talked about a great cyber war is about to happen, and I'm not joking. There have been cyber attacks going out to NVIDIA, going out to Samsung, going out to Toyota between multiple countries. Quite honestly, the, the digital lanes that connect us together are being tussled with warfare right now, okay? It is what it is. Now, there is a situation where people are like, how can I jump in to help my party, my preferred party of choice? And here's Muda's answer. Do not join the cyber war. Don't be a part of what is actually a criminal activity. Remember, computer hacking, even if you're just DDoSing, is a illegal crime to be committing, despite who you're committing it with and who you're doing it for. Look, wherever you operate, you have to operate your computer based on their laws. So there is no way in hell that I can ever sit here and say, yeah, boys, join the, join the resistance, be part of the crew, and download software that'll aid you in joining that resistance. Because the software is the real sussy thing in the question today. It's real sussy wussy, if you will. Now, to understand, okay, we've talked about DDoSs in the past, okay? We talked about DDoSs and what they are. Basically, think about it like this, okay? You've got 400,000 computers, all right, who are all thinking alike, okay? We've talked about botnets in a sense. Now, a botnet is basically, again, having those 400,000 computers serve as slaves, okay? Serve as zombies. Now, they get told what to do by a command and control computer that basically tells those 400,000 computers what to do. So, for instance, if you want to shut down www www. you know uh, randomexample.com all right for instance the command and control server would tell those 400,000 computers in the botnet to just go and flood that specific website that we just mentioned by flooding that website with realistic like network packets realistic network activity you can effectively force that website online you can commit what is known as a denial of service attack okay a distributed denial of service attack in this case now when it comes to pinging something right like we type in ping dot you know www.examplewebsite.com you can ping it a million times and after like what two three pings the server over there will just be like ah swap that away quit requesting re uh, you know anything from it just quit listening to it but if you have again four hundred thousand legitimate systems at the same time hitting that website it's obviously going to be very difficult to get away ddos attacks are one of those things where uh they're very easy to do the software is very easily distributed and it can be sometimes pretty difficult to counter depending on how your system is designed how you have your framework set up you know how large your you know load hosting can be what you have to prevent like there's a million things that you can do to prevent a ddos attack and sometimes not all of them will be enough that's why you see them happen so prevalently okay so I wanted to cover this today because of obviously the, you know, climate that we have in the world right now, a bunch of criminals are using it to take advantage and I got to talk about it. Now, if you've been on the old Telegram and joining some of these crazy hacker groups, you might have noticed messages like this, disbalancer.zip, where they actually send a one megabyte file of what is known to be a program. Now, while I can't translate this, what they actually have mentioned, we are glad to remind you about the software we use to attack Russian sites. It will automatically fetch the attack targets from the server. The password for the archive is disbalancer. Now, what they're actually distributing in this case is a tool known as disbalancer.
Now, if you go to their website over here, they'll say that they're a new generation of Web3 security. This balancer is an effective, decentralized cybersecurity solution that performs stress testing to protect businesses against DDoS attacks and fraudsters with shared resources. Disbalancer's user-friendly network allows cyber enthusiasts from all over the world to earn money performing stress testing. So I guess they've made it like a cryptocurrency where, you know, people pay them to like do some stress testing and everyone that pitches in a portion of their computer's resources will be given a fraction of that cryptocurrency, which they can then convert for actual currency and, you know, makes a little, make a little money on the side. I'm not saying you should ever be a part of this because the legalities are quite questionable at best in this situation. But again, I'm not here to just, you know, bring up this crypto token. What they have mentioned is a new tool called Join Army, a little tab, if you will. So if you click on the Join Army tab, they release this nice thing. Disbalancer launches Liberator. Now, why Disbalancer is important in this case is what these people have done is they've created a DDoS tool. Now, because of the popularity of this tool, you, some of you may have heard of it. There are actual cyber criminals who are utilizing their name and their image and their tool and using it to emotionally, you know, goad people in, launch this software. And what these hackers will do is they'll use this software to steal your information. Now, let's go over what this thing is doing, okay? Disbalancer basically is a tool that allows everyone to jump in, all right? They basically hand out some key servers and targets and uh, those servers and targets go down because a bunch of people download the software, they basically are willing contributors to a botnet. Now, if you ever played that game Watch Dogs 2, you'll probably notice that there's an entire like hacker group, DetSec, in the game. And the way you progress is you gain followers. Those followers in the game download a DetSec app on their smartphone, which allows them to be part of a botnet, okay? That botnet, the larger that it gets, allows DetSec, the group, to actually hack larger and larger targets because they have much more distributed processing power, which is the same thing you can kind of put into layman's terms over here, okay? That's the best kind of easy explanation that I can put in. That's also fun. Now, they've distributed a tool for Windows, for Mac OS, both the Intel and the M1, and Linux, and a Docker version. Now, to understand what really kind of questions me about it is there's no MD5 checks for this, meaning that if you download this from any group on the internet, there's no verifiable way for you to check if the file has not been tampered with, which is very important when it comes to these tools, okay? Which is very important when it comes to very, even just like operating system files, administrative files. I guess the best way to describe what an MD5 will do is if I have this file right here, you know, this little, um, you know, just JPEG file that I have of, uh, of whatever. Now here, I'm going to show you what an MD5 does. Okay. MD5s are best described like this. Let's say I have this one file, right? Now, actually let's create a new file. Let's make it a text file. For instance, let's do this MD5 test. Now inside the MD5 test file, I'm going to put in you know, Muda, all right? Now, when I put in Muda and I save this file, this file now contains Muda, right? As that's the file's contents. Now, of course, this file will be around five bytes. It's not a big file, it's a very small text document. Now, if I do an MD5 check by doing MD5 sum, dropping in this file and hitting enter, you'll notice that this file has this string of characters. Now, we're gonna take this character set over here and I'm just gonna save it real quickly. So right here, we've got B6, B4, C505, A252. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go open this file and we're gonna tamper with it. So let's assume that this was a hacker file. This was a you know program that we were sending out. Now inside this program, I put in some sneaky malware, okay? So yeah, now I've saved it and I got sneaky malware put into it. So if I check the byte size of it, now it's suddenly ballooned in size. It's 21 bytes. But what's important in this is when we do the MD5 sum for this file once more, we can drop in that same file, hit enter, and you'll find out, oh, that MD5 sum has actually changed. So again, look carefully over here. The original sum was B6B4C5. By modifying that file, we changed the sums. The reason why these sums are important is when you're downloading things like operating systems or you know antivirus software, for instance, you wanna make sure that software is verifiably true, okay? That means when you download it from that server, you need to know that that actual service, that file you downloaded came from that server, meaning it has not been tampered with down in the middle. Now, Microsoft will provide you this download. Like when I download this, they'll also give you 
all of these MD5 checks, meaning that if you're, if you downloaded, say the English version of this, right? The English 64 that I did, when you download it and that file does not have this hash, that's a malicious ISO file you downloaded, or it's not the one that came from Microsoft. We do this to verify these files. So the fact that I haven't seen this makes me question things a little bit. Now, I know that I'm going all over the place, but I'm trying to give you as much information as I can whenever you download things from the internet. Don't just think that this is for malware stuff. This could be for any file that, again, you may have to give extra permissions on your system or just any file. If you can MD5 check, always worth doing. Now, again, when they distributed this tool, all right, a lot of the hackers sent this tool out. Now, I've looked at Disbalancer, and for me, I didn't see something overly malicious on their side. However, this is a DDoS tool. Remember that, you know, post I showed you earlier from the vice president of Ukraine, the actual cyber war that they were sending out? These are a bunch of links that I'm going to have to blur out of various websites in Russia, okay? Now, there's one that's all centered around IMAX, and these things are getting 121,000 views every time they're getting posted. This is a big group. Clicking on any of these IP addresses that they post has shown you that they have been DDoS. They've been taken down by the Ukrainian IT cyber team, okay? And that team includes all the people around the world. Because remember, keyboard warriors exist in every aspect of the world. As long as you have a computer and a modem, you're part of the club. It's like that movie Hackers. Right at the end, everyone joined in to attack the Gibson. That's basically how this is going. Now, in a lot of cases, with this tool that's being spread around, you really don't have any idea what the heck it can be doing. Now, again, I've checked that it wasn't overly, overly malicious. However, it is a DDoS tool. Even though these guys tell you to use a VPN before you go into it, I find it kind of weird to launch a piece of software on your host computer that the software could look at what other software you have running, like VPNs, for instance, and, you know, just assuming that you're safe by putting up a VPN and then, you know, letting it connect to various servers. Again, the legality of this is definitely incredibly questionable. This is very much in the gray area, if not putting you at legal risks with, you know, whatever countries you're involved with. Do not jump into something without having any idea what that tool could be using. The reason I'm even saying that too is while this tool could be used for DDoS services as well, and that's also illegal, you have no idea really until you properly 100% audit something, what it could be doing to your computer, to your network, to other computers in your network at all. See, the problem is because of the emotional goading, people who have no idea about any of this are downloading a tool, jumping into it, not knowing the security implications of their own data and their own network in the process. Who knows? And if you download this tool, again, you can't even MD5 verify it, meaning if you download it from some malicious hacker, they could actually steal your information. And now the information being stolen is rather interesting. For example, they're stealing your operating system version, not difficult. They're looking at passwords, okay? Autofill passwords that you've stored on your system, cards that you've saved on your web browser, cookies. But what's really important is they're also starting to look at your cryptocurrencies and NFTs and all those digital assets you like to collect. These things are being analyzed. These hackers are utilizing an actual political scenario, an actual, you know, really, really, really big crisis to make make money, okay? Effectively, that's what most, that's what 99% of malicious hackers do, okay? They, they wanna find the next way to, to, to make money, okay? That's pretty much what it comes down to. In a lot of cases, hackers like this like to obfuscate their software using tools like ASPAC or virtual machine, you know, like uh, obfuscation technology, which basically prevents, you know, actual malicious, like, which prevents investigators from looking at the actual malicious execution for a lot of these tools, meaning they can't analyze or debug the software. And in a virtual machine, they may not be able to launch that software because virtual machines will allow you to deeper scan what the tool is doing in a very safe sandbox environment. People who are writing malicious code do not want any of that, which is exactly uh, one of the red flags in the situation. But, you know, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. These tools that are designed, all right, while the company says it's safe to use, for instance, Avast, which is a massive cybersecurity firm, actually said that they collect user IPs, usernames, and locations. And the reality is, yeah, it's a DDoS tool. They're going to be collecting things like IP addresses. They're going to be collecting things. Here they actually say we were collecting IPs to provide the possibility to cover all the globe for better network distribution and higher services delivering. IP is also helping in remoting, remoting debugging and understanding why our previous clients behave differently on different devices. And they also say use a VPN to encrypt your data. Would we advise you to, to use a VPN if we wanted to collect your data? Look, 
you're also running the software on the same system that the VPN is running on, okay? The IP, I, I, it's very thin lines, okay? Look at the network stack real closely when, when stuff like this is running. But again, getting way too ahead of myself. The cyber war has already been well underway and there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people involved. But there's the thing, these are hundreds of thousands of cybersecurity individuals that know what they're doing, that know exactly how to deal with it. And some of these people are actual official employees, part of the state, which means they are, well, immune from like certain legal issues. The average person is not. And one thing that I cannot promote or talk about promoting and actually like engage even on a moral level is DDoS attacking or joining and partaking in any form of cyber criminal activity. What you are doing is being part of a cyber criminal activity, right? Regardless of what the emotional goading is, imagine for a second, there are legal implications. Also, if you have no idea how to debug the software or know what you're doing, do not launch said software, okay? It's questionable, all right, at best. It's one thing that I wanted to raise awareness to and talk about, and honestly, I think this video really does help when it comes to teaching people not only about DDoSing, but also making sure that the things you download are even legit to start off with. Um, again, that said though, I'm not going to get further into it. I'm just going to tell you not to join a cyber war because it is dangerous, it is scary, and uh, <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> do not do it. And also because of legality, and also YouTube's TOS straight up says, do not be a part of it. Do not join cyber criminal activities. Do not join cyber warfare. Do not be a part of it. Again, I wanted to educate you and bring you awareness on something like this. And also, this stuff really does intrigue me. So let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. This is me, Mudahar. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.